So when uh, Susan invited me to attend the TIA um, jam, I, uh, I said, are you sure you got the right guy? Uh, I, I'm not a technologist. I have never worked in telecom. And I can go two, three, four weeks at a time without ever mentioning the words IoT, edge computing, or AI. So she, but she assured me, she assured me that, uh, that she did indeed have the right guy. So when I, when I think about um, this group, when I, so what I've done over the last three days, or the last few days, is sit back and really observe. And it, it, it's been an, an incredible, fascinating um, look at your discussions and your insights on this industry. Um, you know, as a group, you're, you're an incredible group of really motivated, dedicated, and brilliant people. However, however, <laughs> uh, if, I had to, if I had to categorize your discussions up to this point, um, it's really been through the lens of inside out inside looking outside towards the customer. And so what I hope to do today over the next 20 minutes is really reverse that, reverse that lens a little bit and give you an outside in perspective on innovation in IoT in one very focused um, specific industry in terms of sports and entertainment and in terms of the innovation, the innovation that, that, that it includes. So um, I lead a group at Panasonic that provides enterprise level AV solutions for sports entertainment. Big blinky screens and lights and loud noises at, at stadiums. Um, what's happened over the last few years is a real transformation from that to, to a more interactive um, customer fan engagement model. And so um, I'd, like to, I, I'd like to share with you some comments and share with you a video uh, of some of our customers talking about that transformation. So first off, before, before we run the video, please uh, uh, understand that uh, this video was presented by my marketing department, and so there is blatant self-promotion of Panasonic in parts of the video. Please excuse that, and instead focus on the customer's comments um, in, in terms of transformation. Can you run the video? So, whether you are the Atlanta Braves or the uh, Hartford Yard Goats. Now, there are four words that I bet you never thought would be used in the same sentence. Dunkin' Donuts and Yard Goats, but that's okay. It's my, my, they're my favorite, favorite, favorite mascot. Um, there are two related trends driving technology and innovation transformation in sports today. Two really transformational trends. First and foremost is something that's being called fan engagement. I don't know how many times you heard in that short video, um, whether you are a major league franchise or a minor league franchise, this idea of fan experience, fan engagement comes up over and over again. That's not an accident. And, and so sports teams today are trying to engage the fan literally from the moment of intent, from the moment of, I think I might want to go to a ball game next week. They, they're trying to insert themselves at that moment and really help engage, control, and, and enhance that experience from that point through the game to that fan is back on their couch at home. And so they do, they're doing this because of the challenges of the industry today. And, they, and, and they're doing it because they, what they really want to do is they, they want to make sure that fan stays as a dedicated, loyal customer. So the challenge laid before the industry and those of us serving technology to that, to that business is simple. How do you enhance the fan experience before, during, and after the game? And more so, how do you do it in a seamless, unobtrusive way? How do you mitigate traffic before and after the game? And, and how do you move the owner and the venue from this feeling of data overload to actionable analytics and provide improved metrics and ROI for those venue owners? In short, 
How do you get the fans off their, I'll call it couches, I don't want to say the other word, and into the stadium? So the answer for, for most of the industry is something called total fan engagement. So total fan engagement, at least in terms of how Panasonic defines it, is the art of creating rich, immersive experiences for the fans that provide them with personalized outcomes in an effortless, seamless way, and one in which the technology is both ubiquitous and virtually invisible to them. So the key themes are for the fan is effortless and invisible. For the fan, they don't want to be impressed with your technology. They don't want to see it at all. And I think that's an important, important aspect to, from a standpoint of the lens from the outside in. So the second major trend in, uh, in sports is this merging of sports, entertainment, commerce, and residential. This concept of live, work, and play has become a mantra particularly for professional sports, and is bleeding its way down right through the Division I college and onto the minor leagues. So once upon a time, all teams cared about was what happened in their stadiums. They cared, they cared most about finding that left-handed pitcher who could throw 100 miles an hour and making sure that the hot dogs and the beer, the hot dogs were hot and the beer was cold. But, but that's not true anymore. It's simply not true. And so now this, um, this trend is extending much beyond the stadium. So this is an interesting thought. In the last two years, 70% of major pro projects have been massive affairs combining sports stadiums, entertainment districts, residential, commercial, and public spaces. In essence, they, they, they are no longer building stadiums. They are building small cities. And, and when you think about that, this merging of, of these spaces and integrating them into a cohesive offering is a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge for the, for the teams and for the vendors that are trying to provide technology. But if done right, it creates a perfect landscape for a transformational fan engagement. Because as you remember, what, people, what they're trying to do is engage that fan before, during, and after the game. So the, the four blocks in this slide represent Panasonic's view of smart sectors. Everybody has their view. This is Panasonic's view. Uh, smart cities, smart mobility, smart energy solutions, smart entertainment solutions. What's really interesting is that this second trend in sports is the merging of sports and entertainment and the desire for immersive fan engagement have resulted in smart technology from other sectors, which used to be distinct from this, being pulled into the sports space. And so I want to, what I want to do is take these one by one and take a closer look at some of the technology and the innovation components that are being used in today's sports and entertainment um, space. So first, let's talk, talk about smart cities. So um, transit-oriented development, city services and planning, Smart building and smart infrastructure investments are critical components to smart city initiatives. I mean, we, I, we had a great panel today at breakfast that talked a lot about that in a much more intelligent and better way than I would ever. But what happens is modern stadium projects now involve all three extensively. You can't do a modern stadium without engaging and talking about transit-oriented oriented development. You can't do it without involving city planning and, and, um, and municipal infrastructure. You can't do it without smart infrastructure. It can't be done, in particular when these are involved, again, all three phases. And so um, for Panasonic, our smart cities team has become much more sports-oriented in the last couple of years for that reason. So smart energy solutions. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize I didn't do that right, sorry. There we go, smart energy solutions. So when you talk about smart energy, um, you know, there's, there's, these, there's this concept of, you know, solar energy generation and management, battery storage, microgrids, green tower. These are all regular components of smart energy. 
But what they've also become is regular components of sports stadium projects. Um, teams want to show their fans that they share their interests and their concern and their commitment to green initiatives. And also they also have a, a very big focus on the bottom line and they want to save energy costs. So in, in every a uh, major project that Panasonic has done over the last year in sports, it has involved smart energy in one factor, one form factor or another. And, and we see that as a continuing um, growth, growth piece. So let's, lastly, let's talk about smart mobility. So you got command and control platforms. Again, uh, you more, know more about this than I, but um, I'll try to bring it together. You got command and control platforms. You got um, you know, autonomous vehicles, a very popular subject over the last few days, and um, even things like connected aircraft. S sports stadiums, if you think about it, are and will continue to be a major destination stop for millions of fans in the US every year, millions and millions of fans. So teams want to integrate command and control platforms. They want to integrate uh, uh, innovation in autonomous vehicle and, they, and a connected aircraft into their fan engagement platforms so that, so that as these things develop so that they can again extend that engagement. Additionally, there's been some groundbreaking work in the area of connected aircraft. Um, in incorporating connected aircraft as endpoint sensors in weather. Um, I don't know if you know this, but all your weather, all your weather, whether you listen to the Weather Channel, whether you got Viper weather or Viper radar or any, you know, the, the, the great terms that local news uses, they have great um, um, algorithms and use cases to, to predict weather, but it's all based on technology from the, 1800, from the 1900s. Every day, three times a day, the US Weather Service launches 70 balloons into the air. The guys stand on hills, they launch them into the air, and they track the balloons, and, that's how, and, that, and from that data, all your weather forecasting is done. As an alternative, think about this. At any point in time, there are three to 5,000 aircraft flying over the United States at any point in time. And those aircraft have weather sensors on them that are constantly pinging across the entire flight. So you think about data points of 70, air, 70 weather balloons flying a few miles, and three to 5,000 aircraft constantly pinging, what you end up with is, a, is much better information, therefore much better forecasting and prediction about weather. When you think about sports and the impact of fans, weather is one of the major fan, engage, fa, fan issues and fan concerns. So, so when you talk, talk about connected aircraft, it's more than just getting the fan there, it's also about getting them the endpoint. So lastly, in terms of mobility, you got V2V and V2X, you know, sensor and communication technologies, smart lighting and smart parking that all come into play as the last part of that fan journey pregame and postgame. What I want to do right now is take a deeper dive into one of these areas, parking. So Panasonic like a lot of corporations, has a customer advisory board. We take our biggest customers, we bring them together a few times a year, and we, we spend an in-depth discussion with them, getting them to tell us about their concerns for today, their, their focus on the future. So we have that. We have the, we have the biggest names in sports that come in to talk to us. Um, we have the Cowboys sitting next to the Eagles, which n almost never happens, but, but, uh, but they sit together and they actually talk, and other, others across the industry. And, and about a year ago, we asked them to tell us their biggest concern. And we expected it to be something about you know, security or something about fan engagement. They said parking, unanimously parking. Parking is their number one concern. And so Don Smolinski is the president of the Eagles. And, and he kind of put it best. He said, I can spend many millions of dollars on putting together a quality team. I can, I can spend many hundreds of millions of dollars putting a stadium together. I can, I can really try to control the fans' experience in the stadium. And I, and I can have this great situation where my team wins in overtime on a last second play, and, it, it, and I've created this incredible fan experience. And then some um, off-duty lieutenant from the local police department decides to close a street that shouldn't be closed and 30,000 of my fans sit in the parking lot for two hours waiting to get home, and the entire experience is ruined. 
And that's why parking is important to them. Because if they think about fan engagement, they really want to try to control that experience. So I want to do a little bit about a little deep dive into parking. So we have the capability today to use technology to transform the fans' experience in, the par in parking their vehicle and provide venues with controls and options as never before. So spot violation enforcement, inventory management and dynamic pricing. Think about dynamic pricing, the ability for a person while they're driving to the game to say, wow, I'm going to be late. My kid's going to be really upset with me. You know what? I think I'm going to upgrade my parking from the E lot to the A lot and be able to do that seamlessly. Member pass verification, real-time analytics, parking spot wayfinding, vehicle locator, all these things are, are now um, available and possible with IoT. There, it's the first time I said IoT all, all, all day. And here, by the way, is the only technology-based slide in my presentation. So if you've been, if you've been jonesing a little bit for that, if you're getting a little bit of a draw, here you go. This, this is a typical unwired IoT-based parking solution. It's one of several that are out there and are being seriously considered in, in, in sports. You got sensors embedded in the road or in parking spaces. You got some edge infrastructure. You've got some cloud services, API, all converting that data and, and translating it into useful analytics and useful data so that somebody on their phone can, can, can take a, make, make a better parking experience. It's not so much, you know, and again, I, am, I apologize up front, it's not so much the solution from the user standpoint, it's the end point to the end user. They don't almost don't, you know, I, I talk about edge and I talk about um, unwired and the folks in sports go, that's great, that's great. Is it gonna help my fan get to the, get to the game on time and get them to park on time? So. If, you, if we do it right, there's a, there's a variety of problems that we want to solve by, by, by smart parking, what they want in, in, in the industry. Mobile POS cash shrinkage. The, the mobile POS as, a, as an answer to cash shrinkage. When you think about that, parking is millions of dollars worth of revenue, and it's being handled by part-time and, contr part and contractors handling cash for the most part. If, if, there is a, if there is a recipe for shrinkage, that's it. Um, fans missing the start of the game, is, is, or, or again, staying lo longer, eliminating that. Lack of fan visibility on parking spaces available, and providing them with, with instant and interactive means of making sure that they get, what, get the space they want when they want it. Difficulty finding their vehicles post-game. I don't know about you, but I have often wandered, wandered around, around stadium parking lots trying to find where I park my darn car. And then fans lacking, navigate, lacking information on egress and ingress. These are all problems that can be solved and are being solved today in, in, the fan, in the stadium world. So finally, we get to the stadium, um, smart stadium solutions. And as I mentioned before, um, it starts with fan engagement beginning in their home and usually starts with you know, a cell phone, a uh, smartphone, but can be really any device that communicates with them about their intent and what they want to do. It continues during the drive to the game, as I mentioned. When they get to the area, but not necessarily in the stadium, you've got light ID technologies that are interacting with them through a variety of displays, both for entertainment, for revenue, for advertising, for wayfinding. You've got Plaza kiosks that can provide the same thing. So again, another piece of glass in another format, but doing the same thing. And even in, as in, in, in terms of other endpoints, high contrast transparent screens. Um, teams are doing really interesting things today with their stadiums in terms of tra in transforming the glass in the stadium to, to, as a means to do, again, entertainment, advertising, wayfinding. Once they get, once they get, into, once they get into the entertainment district, Security systems, in-store POS systems, facial recognition, um, things like heat mapping uh, are all being used to gather data about, about fans so that, they can, so, that, so that teams can change the experience as they go, but also identify fans and provide them with 
very personal, very upfront ex experiences. Uh, the biggest thing that, that teams want to do, frankly, is they care about all fans, but they really care about those fans in the suites, and they really care, care about those fans on the 50-yard line. And being able to identify them in unobtrusive ways and cater to them, whether they're in the stadium or not, is a really important and, and vital thing for them to do. And now, finally, we're in the stadium. And, and when it comes to the engagement, things like entertainment drones, which again brings the fan from, from just observing to interacting with, with, the, uh, with the team and with the env environment are really, are really interesting. Uh, Multi-video distribution. This is a very fancy way of saying, take your device and control. You become the director. You control what, what feeds you want to see. You control what what replays you want to see, you control how you want to look at, at that. Giving fans the ability to basically manage their own view of the, of, of, the, of the events. Fan engagement platforms, I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, high density Wi-Fi. The high density Wi-Fi and fan, fan engagement platforms are tools that really need to, that are becoming part of almost every uh, engagement. If you've got 50,000 people in a stadium and they're all using their devices to make, make for an, um, a fan, a fan um, engagement that is customized to them. You better have the ability for them to connect and stay connected. And so high density Wi-Fi is one of the solutions, but it's really all about, it's about providing connectivity to those fans. So I wanna talk a little bit about and finish the discussion about fan engagement applications. There's been a lot of talk and I sat in a fascinating discussion uh, yesterday about platforms, the future of platforms, and you know, can there be great standard platforms? In sports, I will tell you the answer. There's no, there's no standard platforms. Every fan engagement application is a fan engagement platform. And, and they're being designed specifically for sports and specifically to provide the venues with what they need. And so, at least for this industry, it's not about standardization, it's about customization. So I want to take you just um, a quick trip down a typical day, typical game day, uh, with a, utilizing a fan engagement platform. So they're true IoT platforms. They allow seamless integration of stadium technology. They're custom designed and focused on connecting the fan's journey pre, during, and post game, and equally in providing venue owners with revenue generation and real ROI. If you don't serve both those things, it's not successful. So let's meet Mike here. This is Mike. So Mike is a guy, typical guy going to a game. And, a, and, and, and what I want to do is just take you through a typical journey about Mike. My, I want to impress upon you about this. This is not to be. This is being done today in, in sports venues in varying degrees. And if it's not being done, it's being planned, and if it's not being planned, it's being talked about. And what I'm taking you through is what I would consider table stakes. There are teams and organizations doing much more of this, and I'll chat about that in a minute. But this is very typical. So to encourage Mike to leave his house earlier and to mitigate traffic issues, he's given incentives to visit restaurant venues outside the stadium pregame. Solves a traffic problem, increases revenue. When he gets there, he gets an opening tour overview, and he's asked to make a prediction about halftime, and he's asked to do a quick survey about food preferences. And all this information is gonna be used during the rest of the game to help create a personalized experience for him. As he's walking to his seat, he's engaging with, he's engaging with displays, which, which are interactive. Uh, light ray technology, link ray, light ID technology is one of them but the ability to literally engage with the fan and change the, the display and the message based on that fan as they're walking through and going through the stadium is things that are actually being implemented today, but can't be done without IoT. Interactive digital screens are also displaying results instantaneously on what fans think the halftime half score will be. It'll also provide um, gamification, um, advertising, revenue, uh, wayfinding, all those things that you would, you would normally do. But it's linked to sensors which, which recognize who's standing in front of that 
that interactive display and what they're and what they're predisposed to want. Aggregated digital displays. You, when when we when we asked about food preferences, that information is now being aggregated, and so as as. Uh, Instant surveys are being taken of fans and sections, and the ability to change the actual advertising and promotions in a section based on fan preferences is being, is being pushed today out in certain venues. Cue management, you know, everybody's been to a game and has walked away from the seat at the wrong time, and the line is to 37 people long. Cue management is a way to, again, link your preferences link real-time queuing, link those things, and be able to provide somebody with smart um, instructions and advice about when they get up and buy their hot dog. At halftime, the, um, the, the results are in. You've got winners and losers sponsored by Coke or Pepsi or Coors or somebody, somebody. And so there's the ability to really engage the fan at halftime. Ability to, to do real fanometers. Uh, you know, you've all been at games where it's the fanometer, and that's great when everyone's in the stadium, but I've also, also been there when the fanometer goes off the edge and there's been 14 of us in the stadium cheering, so pretty sure that was rigged. Uh, the ability to actually really provide feedback based on sensors throughout the stadium. And finally, this idea of pushing, uh, pushing content based on real time events. The Eagles score a touchdown. They didn't do that so much last year, but when the Eagles score a touchdown, um, you know, the ability to, to, to engage with the fans in a number of ways. This shows being able to have half price water, but think about it in terms of the number of ways. It's simply about engaging real-time real events with the fans based on their preferences. And then finally, re food retailing. After the game, using those preferences, encouraging Mike to to, um, to visit a local restaurant instead of trying to get into his car, in particular because you've noticed that that stupid second lieutenant, lieutenant that, that blocked the street has now blocked the street again. And so instead of getting those fans all queuing into that 30,000, you, you spend some money and you encourage them to do something else. Again, it's, it, it, these are things that are happening today, but the ability to do it instantaneously based on the sensors in and outside the stadium is what's truly making a difference. And then, again, this ability for taking, taking input, changing it into, into actions, and being able to reward fans in, in terms of what's happening at the game is important. So the last thing is, and I mentioned it, what does the fan engagement application deliver the stadium management and the venue in one game day? Now, there's a listing there of the kinds of things that, that, that it does. But, but I want to just really sum this up. Teams want fans to remain loyal, and they want to improve their experience. But for teams and venue owners, the real key to fan engagement is all about ROI. And ROI is all about actionable analytics. I, I, the, the biggest feedback we've gotten from sta sports stadiums teams is, we've spent millions on collecting data. We've got tons of data. We have no idea what to do with it. Again, Don Smolinski, I've quoted him twice, so off the buy a banner, said, I don't really care about metrics of how many fans are 30 and how many fans are 25 and how many fans this. I need to know, do I put out the green sweaters or the white sweaters in the store? I need to know, should I, should I make more hot dogs or more hamburgers? I need to know whether, whether we should put the tarp out at halftime because there's going to be a thunderstorm or leave it off. And so for sports stadium owners, they don't care about data. They don't even care about fancy charts. What they want that data is to be funneled down into A, B switch decisions. So that when, they, when, they're, when they're managing a game, they simply go, use that data to say, you know what, put out the green sweaters and know that, the, that the, 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 the fantastic amount of data and analytics behind it will, will lead to the fact that they'll probably sell more, more green sweaters that day. And that's probably one of the premier messages that I want to tell you, is when it comes to the customer, 
It's about outcomes. And it's about outcomes based on, on their, what they're trying to do with their customers. So, I'm out of time, so I'm going to make this real quick. Total fan engagement in smart stadium districts are enabled by IoT. Cannot happen without it. But from a, from a, from a standpoint of outside looking in, it's about three main things for the fan. Effortless, seamless, ubiquitous, invisible, personalized, and secure. Fans want to appreciate the experience. They don't want to worry about technology. Um, it's one of the reasons why the platforms are unique. A fan doesn't want to sit and make choices on, a, when they, on their phone. What they want to be able to do is, because the Eagles and everybody else is going to electronic ticketing, they want to use the same app that they got from, from the Eagles to get into the stadium and have that app handle everything else for them without a single thought or a click. For the team, I mentioned, they want to move from data overload to actionable analytics. They want to deliver ROI and improve fan loyalty as a result of that. And then finally, for our industry, the future is now. I hate that cliche, but there's no other way to say it. This is happening now. Um, this, there is not just proof of concepts going on. There are teams all over the industry that are, that are spending millions of dollars putting in fan engagement models today. But it's not just sports, grocery, fashion, retail, transportation, branding. This is happening right now. It is an incredible time to be in this business and talking to, talking to enterprises about this. I think that within the next 18 months, we will see a sea change in terms of, of, in terms of ROI and, um, and integration and adoption of these types of, types of models across many businesses. And so if there's ever a time to be excited by, by making IOT investment pay, this is it. Thank you very much for your time. And I would be happy to take any comments or questions, but no snide remarks.